everybody and welcome to a new tier list 7.36c i think i don't know someone can correct me if i'm wrong total neutral yeah i don't have a really good intro yet you guys can see the chat on the screen i do these on my twitch stream twitch.tv slash i annihilate please yes like comment subscribe uh if you don't subscribe the grandma's not getting out of the cage or whatever um, every time you subscribe, a kitten finds a new home. Stuff like that. Just, you know, the normal stuff. Today will be carries. We love carry heroes in the chat. We love carries. Carry players, these days, there's a lot of them. It's the most popular role uh, by far. Also has the most griefers because everyone fights for carry. Just a little bit of a quiz. Just a little bit of quiz info. Trivia. Let's start with... Let's set the tone, okay? Let's start with an S-tier carry above the rest of the heroes by far. And this is going to be quite subjective. Um, I'm going to put Broodmother up here, okay? Normally, this would be like a hero specialist thing. Right now, in really high rank lobbies, and probably if you can get decently good at Brood. I don't think you'll win on Brood the first game you play it, but if you play, like, a few games and maybe watch a replay or something, you can play a pretty easy, like, Brood these days. You put the web in the mid lane with the necrotic web, it instantly wins your mid lane. If they lose mid lane with a web in their lane, they suck. So you win mid. I've seen some Broods put them in all three lanes even and just win all three lanes for their team. Um, Universal Hero, Bloodthorn's one of the best items in Dota. Glyphnir is one of the best items in Dota. She builds Bloodthorn, not Glyphnir. That's fine. Um, very good lane matchups in the off lane, I would say, but not so much in mid and in off lane, like in the safe lane, rather. But yeah, I think it's probably the best carry. This hero is insanely contested in high rank gameplay. Um, now let's, let's go take a look at like a medium carry. Where have we got the medium carry? Hey guys, just a friendly reminder that 77% of you aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you do want more content and want to be up to date with the latest and greatest Dota 2 content out there on the YouTubes, please subscribe. Thank you. Have a good day. Gary's at. Um, where's TA? Templeasy. This is alphabetical, right? I'm not crazy. Oh, it's because I had the mid tier list on before, maybe? Because SF is up here, and he's not alphabetical. So it's probably how I moved them before. Yeah, TA's over here. Okay. I think TA is fine. If you're a mid player that has played a lot of TA and you get stuck on carry, this is usually the go-to for a lot of them. Um, not nearly as powerful as it was, like, two or three patches ago, like, at the beginning of the patch. Definitely still strong because you can get two points in a meld in a lot of lanes, and you get the level one side blades for free. I guess level zero side blades. But having side blades is an innate, and getting extra refraction charges for damage when you're in a fight in the lane is nice. Um, you know, still scales pretty well. Nothing wrong with the hero, just not like first pick broken as it was before. Um, next up, I might add an underrated section in the future. Now that I think about it, for now we'll just leave it here. I think Wind Ranger's A tier. Um, if you're lower rank, it might actually feel hard to win on this hero. I'm, I'm not sure. It's not like the the standard like you get these items, you auto win. Like it's not like a timing based hero really. You're just insanely strong at laning. The meta and high rank and and pro play right now is to stay in your lane as long as possible as carry. Like eventually you're gonna have to move. But if you can soak your lane for 12 minutes or so and just win your lane. That is the most impactful thing in the meta right now for carry. So picking stuff like Brood uh, that like controls the lane even beyond that with the webs and the spiders and takes the tower. Picking stuff like Wind Ranger, insanely hard to lane against and push out a lane. Those are very strong in the meta. But if you're like 3, 4k MMR or lower, it might be easier to just pick more traditional carry. So just keep that in mind as a caveat. This list is like based off my experiences in games, what I've played, what I've played against. Um, not like I'm trying to make the list relatable in a way because not everybody is like 11, 10 to 11 KMMR or whatever I'm at. I'm at 10.7, I think. So 
I'm not trying to make it like 10k MMR list only. That'd be stupid. Other carry players probably know better than me. Um, but like, yeah, just as far as hero strengths go, if you're a very good wind ranger, now it's time to pick it. Um, what else do we got here? What else we got here? If I miss a few heroes, you guys can let me know too. I think Monkey King is very strong with the jumping facet. And another hero that you might have to like counter pick a little bit. I think you can usually pick this blind though and be like good 99% of the time. Like most people pick melee offlaners. You're not going to lane like some weird um, Viper type hero. Like I, I just can't see like what hero would really dumpster this blind. Um, playing against two range heroes could be annoying sometimes depending on your support. But very strong hero right now with the jumping facet. You're basically anti-mage. Uh, most Monkey Kings I've seen build Glipnir, which is probably, like, top two items in the patch. I think, like, best items in the game right now for, like, mid or offlane or carry, uh, less so offlane, but it's just, like, Glipnir and Bloodthorn and abusing them in some way. Maybe not the first item. Uh, Glipnir tends to be first item for offlane Windranger. I've seen Glipnir offlane Visage. Glipnir on Ember as a second item. Glipnir Monkey King. Very strong item. Uh, Bloodthorn's usually like second or third item if you go an Orchid. Like, let's say you're playing Brood. You go Orchid, maybe third item, you finish the Bloodthorn, you get another Power Spike with Manta and all the Spiders. Void Spirit, similar. You'll go like Mage Slayer, Ags, Manta, Bloodthorn, or Orchid, Ags, um, Manta, Bloodthorn. Very powerful hero to pick right now. Snapfire Carry, I'm not so sure about, but Snapfire is another like Glipnir user. Let's, this hero, um, I think if you are Mason Doe 2, you can put it in S. His clinks is very powerful. It's one of a lot of MMR. Personally, I think that clinks is like A tier, but I could be wrong. I don't see enough of this hero to really say. I haven't seen this hero lose very much as a carry, to be honest, but it hasn't been in like every single game, uh, Going Deso Shard and Daedalus and, and whatever, like, the the main reason I'm not exactly sold on it is because people don't get the... They don't do the Orchid. The Orchid build actually sucks. They go the Deso stuff. Um, Like I said, this is mostly like a Bloodthorn Glipnir patch, and he doesn't really abuse those, but the hero is really, really strong. It could potentially take over the meta um, if more carries start to pick it. But that hero is is really, really strong. I don't want to undersell it. Very strong at, like, all levels of play as well. Invis heroes that have solo kill potential go up in value ginormously at all ranks, right? Because the, the lower the rank, ideally, the more spread out people are in those games. Or not ideally, but it just tends to happen. Um, people are very uncoordinated in pubs. If you get fast deaths or shard or whatever, you can get a bunch of kills. You can farm really fast. Carry to counter Beastmaster. I've seen PA picked a decent amount. I think Chaos Knight can work. You just got to focus the boars. Troll can work. Anything that can focus down the boars. TA is really annoying for Beast, too. Um, Let's see. What else do we got? Lifestealer. Um, I think this hero might actually be B tier. I'm not... I don't want to, like... I don't want to undersell Lifestealer, but I think that the recent nerfs, like he gets only gets one HP from the Corpse Eater. There was some other change to him in some way. Um, we just got out of the Luna Lifestealer patch, 7.35. In 7.36, I've always felt like Lifestealer is like one tier below the other carries. So he's at least B tier at best. I put him in the C tier. I think you need to have a good lane. And he fits the meta. Like, he's probably one of the best heroes at sitting in lane forever and, like, controlling the safe lane. But a lot of the times, it just doesn't happen. He lanes against, like, Hoodwink Wind Ranger or something and just can't lane at all and just gets bricked. There's maybe, like, a weird Slardar pick or... Um, I've even seen, like, some Sand Kings beat Life Slayer, which should be, like, impossible to me. But he just doesn't feel like he dominates in lane that much anymore because of the base damage nerfs, I guess. You really need to get to, like, double Bracer. The problem with laning right now for carries is if you don't pick Universal Hero, and they do, 
they will have 70 damage level 1, 2, and 3 to like 70 to 90, and you will have 50. And Lysler is one of those 50 damage heroes that needs to like fight for creeps, not just like only CS. Um, let's, let's go down again. Troll. I think Troll is A tier. I could be convinced on B tier. This hero seems really powerful. Um, I don't know exactly what tipped him over the edge for me. I think getting your Q for free and getting to put more points into the axes and the fervor is really strong. Uh, the shard has been really strong for a long time. The extra armor facet is insanely strong throughout the game. You feel really tanky during your ult or just hitting people. Um, very strong lane dominator. Again, fits the meta. You can usually sit in your lane and farm all the way up to a battle fury before having to leave. You win your lane, yada, yada, yada. Can actually fight the universal heroes pretty well. Just re like really solid hero, honestly. Um, S tier... My, like, we might have to move one of these into S-tier, because we're, we're going to run out of heroes soon, actually. There's definitely, like, one more S-tier hero in the patch. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Without yapping too much longer. Let's get Gyro in here. I think Gyro is also C-tier. I think if you have Io or Marcy or some type of buff hero, it can work. Um, the biggest problem with Gyrocopter is you have 50 base damage and everyone else has 90. Good luck. Have fun. If you can get around that by, like, you know, Io Gyro is a really sick combo, or you have a good lane, the hero tends to do really well. You can get really farmed really fast and just completely take over a game. But, yeah, just kind of difficult to, like, Enigma's been pretty decently popular, has a really strong win rate. If you pick Gyro into Enigma, free lane, pretty much, and then you're going to take over the game. So that, that'd be, like, the best example of a good game for Gyro. Do there there's probably gonna be some disappointment from uh the YouTube comment section because I'm not gonna include too many heroes, I don't think. I don't think there's too many viable carries. I wanna put Sven in S tier because of like tournament performances and stuff and like what I think about the hero. I think like we're gonna leave him A tier. I don't know. I think I think we're just gonna have to move Clinks here. I think actually think Clinks is broken. I've I've like convinced myself. I think Clinks is actually just broken. Every game I've seen it played, it wins. It has an insane win rate on all the stat websites at my rank. Um, there, it's just like kind of lowish sample. That's the only problem I have with it. But it it definitely feels more powerful than all these other heroes. There definitely has to be a a difference. <laughs> I think PA was a requested hero. PA is bottom of A tier or top of B tier. And the only reason I like PA a lot is the methodical facet farms really, really fast. And she's actually pretty strong in lane now, I feel like, for some reason. I don't know exactly. Like, she's always been decently strong in lane, but I don't know if it's the matchups or what. But this hero seems to do pretty well in lane. And again, we're in a sit in lane meta, so the heroes that like I've even seen Ricky picked a few times. The heroes that normally like get punished when the enemy tier hero enemy team has like Luna jungling and they're just like Ricky trying to farm a diffusal blade in lane. The off lane heroes don't feel too insanely strong right now at laning. Um like maybe you'll be against a Wind Ranger or a Visage every now and then, but Against Beastmaster, you should be able to get a Battle Fury pretty easily. Sand King just pushes the wave into you. You get to free farm. There's a lot of offlane heroes that just give the carry free farm. And you can just sit in lane against for a long time. That'd, that'd be like my general feel of the patch is carry. Uh, ba -bum. Where's Weaver? Weaver's next. Now, I think Weaver's one of the most brokenest heroes in all of Dota 2. But I think she's just way better as support or offlane a lot of the time. And, like, I don't like offlane Weaver at all. Carry Weaver is, like, good if not countered. And I wouldn't say there's a lot of counters to Weaver necessarily. But for some reason, it just feels like the carry Weaver, like, is very strong with items. Don't get me wrong. But support Weavers tend to have more impact in the early game. And 
will scale into 80% of a carry weaver's potential. So like, yeah, six slotted weaver level 25, like triple creating people out of the shard, like with shard and Sukuchi and the, the talent and getting Daedalus and Satanic and all that's nice. But a vessel weaver running around the map, warding, roaming, getting kills, and then going Glipnir and carry stuff anyway, just feels like it does like 70 to 80% of the carry's job damage wise, even with like half the net worth. So like, I don't know. I just don't feel that strongly about carry weaver. There's definitely been some games where a carry weaver has carried me or done really well, but it's normally from snowballing off the landing phase. Yeah. Wind Ranger carry is really good. These aren't necessarily in left to right, unless I specify, like I think PA is definitely bottom of a tier. These are mostly pretty even. I think Wind Ranger is much stronger than than Monkey Troll and Sven, but the the middle ones are pretty pretty even. Chaos Knight, um, I would normally put him in S. And you know what? Yeah, we're we're gonna put him in S. Keep in mind, this hero is getting dumpstered at Riyadh or something. Like as far as tournament play goes, for some reason, losing three strength by level thirty is just the biggest deal of all time or something. Or he doesn't do well in the captain's mode draft. Or um, pro teams haven't figured out a bit. As far as public games go, you're going to end the laning phase with 400 kills. You're going to sit in your lane forever with the lifesteal from your crit. You abuse Bloodthorn, which is like, you know, one of the two best items in the patch, especially for damage output wise. And yeah, just like very easy to play hero, very easy to understand, um, very easy to have high impact on everything you want out of a carry player because a lot of our carry players on our teams grief us to death they'll pick anti-mage because they hate their teammates and themselves and they could just pick chaos side and do twice as good okay um are there any meta-ish heroes i'm forgetting morphling i guess morphling and faceless void other heroes are going to be more subjective, as I won't have played against them that much. Let's get Morphling on the table. Now, if your name is Yatoro or Redan or whatever name he chooses next time he queues a Dota tournament up, Morphling can be S or A tier, okay? Now, if you're, like, the mom and pop Morphling, the, like, grandfather's Morphling, it can be, like, F or D tier. I think, on average you're going to get a B tier Morphling on your team. The hero feels fine. It doesn't feel ridiculous. Um, it doesn't feel that bad to have on your team. You're also not too happy when it's on your team because, you know, usually some Morphling just sits on all agility and dies. Sometimes they'll have good performances. Sometimes they'll have bad performances. But if it was Yatoro piloting the Morphling, you would never lose. That's kind of what the hero feels like. Um Keep in mind, you know, PSA for all Morphling players out there, you need to leave Adaptive Strike at level 1 and, or 2 and the stat shift at level 1, or not level 1, at level 2, and skill stats immediately after maxing Waveform. If you are maxing both the stat shift and the Adaptive Strike in this patch, the hero falls to like a 32% win rate when it's probably like 47 or 48% win rate overall, including the noobs picking it. Be leveling the stats gives you four attributes per level, okay? It's not like other heroes where you get two. You get four attributes per level on Morphling when you skill stats. So people leave Adaptive at level one. They also um, only put two points in the attribute shift, and they don't rush Konda anymore. Konda will also lower your win rate by another 5%. Manta... Butterfly, Satanic, Daedalus. Going full, like, right-click items is just way better and playing off the extra attributes you get because you'll have more mana. You won't have to get a Conda. You won't have to get Scotty. You can just go pure right-click and still have enough, like, stats from having stats. That That's pretty much my Morphling rant. Let me make sure we're not, like, 10 years into the video as well. I'm, I'm, I tend to yap a lot in these. Okay, we're, like, 20 minutes in. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. Oh, yeah, Ursa? Um, Ursa's just another A-tier hero, honestly. Like, you could put him in S, but I think Ursa and Windranger are equally powerful. I definitely feel like I lose more often and in more bullshit ways, or I win more often and win in more bullshit ways with Brood 
Chaos Knight or Clinx on my team. If that makes sense. I don't feel like, oh, they have an Ursa, I can't win, or oh, I have an Ursa, we're going to auto win. In the same way, those other heroes, when they have a good start. Beastmaster played as a carry? Not in, not in pub games. Maybe it was played in a tournament or something. Jug? Yeah, we're going to move on to the the less meta heroes. I think these are mostly all the meta heroes I can think of. We're missing Faceless Void, actually. Let me do Faceless Void. This will be the last, like, actually in the meta hero. Um, I think very high C tier, low B tier. You could move them based on how you feel it works in your games. Um, every hero that's not on the list, and maybe I'll think of another one, like maybe I'm forgetting something. These are going to be heroes that aren't as popular, but you can still pick as carry that I have less experience playing with or against. And we're going to start off with everyone's most beloved pick if you hate your teammates, anti-mage. This hero is terrible. You should never pick it. You should only pick it if you know you're intentionally griefing four other people on your team. Um, even though Sand King is in a lot of games currently, you should never pick anti-mage. Anti-Mage has been auto-lose this patch, the facet patch, pretty much. He was decently pickable before that. They took the slow off Mana Burn. It's a talent at 15 now. He would probably be pretty good with that, this patch, honestly. If they, re if they reverted that change, he'd actually be able to have some laning power. This hero is complete grief right now. Pure went 17-0. Yeah, he probably had the perfect Anti-Mage game, and he would have won anyway. He could have played any hero and probably won that game. Naga? Naga also doesn't fit the meta right now. Um, I think you can pick... Naga's very low C or very high D. I'm going to put Naga in the D section. So Naga is typically good in games where... In metas where the offlaner is really strong. Like when people are picking a lot of offlane Broodmother. Like a lot of it. Naga was very go-to pick because you know ensnare catches brood pretty easily builds manta to dispel like any bloodthorn shenanigans but because she d pushes the shitty lane the entire game she won't defend the tower she won't stay in lane very long in the bad matchup she'll go to the jungle and she'll just keep the shitty lane d pushed so the team can play 4v4 against the weaker heroes and like like in the brood matchup right brood will be just like webbing around and chilling and she'll be de-pushing that lane so hard that Brood is in a constant tug-of-war for the for lane pressure. So she can't move as much. If you have a nor if you have an anti-mage carry against Brood, Brood will just swarm the anti-mage, go gank mid with webs. She'll like take over the whole screen. We're in a patch where if they have a Brood, you're much better suited to picking Ursa, Monkey King, even the Wind Ranger, and sometimes Troll, and just beating the hero in lane and not letting any of that happen in the first place. Most offlane heroes are lose lane heroes that farm like ancient creeps. Like Sand King normally loses lane and farms ancients. Beastmaster normally loses lane and farms ancients. There's not that many heroes that just outright win the lane and force the carry to jungle. So a lot of battle fury heroes are actually really popular right now. Or heroes that can that have like are able to stay in lane. Um moving onwards. Sniper, we're going to leave him in Herald Superstar Division no matter what tier list it is. That's just the, the easy, easy one. Luna, very similar. I think like it's a mix between C and D. The reason why I hesitate to put Naga and Luna in the C tier is because like there's so many heroes that you can pick when it's a good Luna or Naga game that are just bet like better in those games anyway. So you're kind of picking it in a good game, but you're also picking it because you like the hero and you want to have fun. So it's more pick for fun. Arc Warden? I don't... I haven't seen an Arc Warden win in like two years. So um, I'm going to put this in the hate your team section, honestly. Like... You can make a case for hero specialist for Arc Warden, but I think the hero is just like... I've Like, personally... If I've seen this hero win before, I would be putting him in Hero Specialist. I promise you, in the past four months of me streaming Dota, I haven't seen Arc Warren win one time in any of my games. Not once have I won with this hero on my team, off my team, when I'm spectating in Dota TV. I haven't seen this hero win once, so it just has to be bad. I don't believe it. 
Spectre, pick for fun, I think. Spectre's actually really, really strong right now, but the meta just doesn't fit the hero. So, like, exactly what we talked about for other heroes. Spectre has 50 damage level 1. She has to lane university heroes that have 70. Um, doesn't win the lane or stay, can't like gets bullied out of the lane very easily. The laning phase is the hero's only problem currently. Everything after the lane, the facets, the ult, very strong in the mid game. You just can't get out of lane. So you're kind of picking it for fun. Even in a good Spectre game, you could have just picked something else. But university heroes just make this hero like unplayable in the laning phase. Bum. What else are we missing? Terrorblade. I, I have mixed feelings about Terrorblade. I actually think the hero is quite good. It just doesn't win for some reason, and I don't know why. I think Terrorblade's like kind of like these Naga Luna type heroes that would just like to go even in lane and then go jungle. They don't really always win their lane. Hero's like probably the best laner in all of Dota for like three minutes, and then kind of falls off. Like level one meta and reflection. Probably the level, like the best level two power spike carry of all time. Further levels of the hero just gives you images, really. Like you're not going to level reflection again unless you're support. You're probably not going to level meta again because it's on cooldown for the next 10 minutes of the game. But like strongest level two and normally does well in those same types of metas with Naga and Luna where like they're strong against the early lane dominators and then they can go to the jungle when the lane gets hard. And that's just not the meta right now. Uh, hero itself is honestly okay. Both facets are playable. Uh, I had somebody, I think it was Ramsey's built Vlad's on, on Terrorblade on my team and went the make full HP illusions facet and that looked okay. Uh, I've seen people just get a casual morbid mask and do that. So you will get the full Sunder facet and do fine, but hero is okay. Alchemist is very underrated right now. Um... I'm going to put this in Hero Specialist, and that's kind of weird to say for Alchemist, but I think that the Hero is actually really good. It's just very underrated, and people have so many options. Like, you have every Skittle color under the rainbow of carries that are very strong right now. Like, there's a lot of really strong carries. We actually have, a like, a hammer or, you know, some other mention some other looking object that's unmentionable, but there's a lot of very top-heavy carries this patch, right? So... It just doesn't, like, I think Alchemist is actually pretty good, but there's just other options, is I think what's the problem. But if you're really good at Alk, it's actually a decent patch for it. There's a lot of carries, so bear with me. I'm trying to go through them a little quicker now, because we're getting to, like, the ones I've played against less often. We're going to ignore Razor. We're going to ignore Bristle. We'll put Bristle in Hero, especially. Uh, Herald. There we go. Um, not, not too much to talk about there. That Hero is just broken in Herald. If we saw Quinn take five heralds down, 1v5 on Bristleback, not, not much to be said. PL, um, I I know this is, like, kind of weird to say, but, like, PL is insanely broken at low MMR right now. Like, the win rate between low MMR and high MMR is so different that I just have to put him in Herald Superstar. People just can't deal... Like, they made the illusions easier to play with for noobs with the... I think it's Divergence is the facet. And still really strong with, like, Ag's Diffusal and stuff. Just, again, doesn't really fit the meta at high MMR. Necro carry? Nah. Skip. Drown Medusa? Okay, the bow heroes. Um, ba -ba. Where is Drow? <sighs> I don't know. I think, like, the problem with Drow... We're going to put her at the bottom of C tier. Okay? But here's the problem with Drow. I don't think you want to be Drow against a lot of these heroes up here. Like, even, like, you can kite Sven, kind of. He buffs the whole team with armor. Troll can get on top of you. It's kind of hard to kite. It feels like the hero should be good. I think the shard is really powerful. I just, I don't know. I don't see it that much. And when I do see it, it doesn't feel very good. It's just, I think Broodmother also is like a really big counter to Drow. And that's really popular in all lanes, really. It just seems like it doesn't fit the meta very well. But if a lot of her counters aren't in the pool, she probably does pretty well. I don't think Razor's a good enough hero to play as a carry right now. 
Shadow Fiend, we're going to put in Hero Specialist. I think we might see some carry Shadow Fiend at Riyadh, potentially. The problem with carry Shadow Fiend, honestly, is that the mid players just first pick it this patch, and it's always banned, at least in my games. Um, in theory, it should be an okay carry. I've seen people do really well in tournament play and in high-level pub, high pubs with right-click carry Shadow Fiend. But good luck stealing this from the mid players that are dead inside and want to play Magic Shadow Fiend. They're just going to like pick it before you, honestly. What else do we got? What else do we got? There's definitely one or two characters I'm missing out on here. Venge? It's just hard. Like, I don't think Venge is a bad hero. But, like, look at all these other options you have. Like, if you could choose between a steak dinner and some easy mac you're probably gonna pick the steak dinner but easy mac's not bad like that's how i feel about venge carry like you're not gonna lose the game because you have venge carry but why isn't it off lane why is it in my safe lane and why isn't it like any of these other heroes that kind of define the meta right now like these are meta defying heroes venge is just kind of whatever tony's not a mid hero anymore he's supporter mid or tony's not a carrier anymore he's supporter mid Alone Druid, no, not the Lone Druid. Ricky, we can do. I'm gonna throw Ricky where he belongs. Um, I'm not gonna talk about him too much. There are some Ricky spammers. I'm actually 100% win rate against Ricky this patch, but it feels really powerful when I play against it. So, I think you have to be very good at the hero and have a strong five with you, but. You can take over games with a like, strong defusal type timing. Jug, yes. Let's not forget Jug or not. Um, my heart wants me to put Juggernaut in F tier, okay? I love Juggernaut, and I want to put him in F tier. Because you don't want to play in the Orchid, like, Ursa, TA, Illusion Hero patch. You don't want to play against Spiders. You don't want to play against Troll Warlord. You don't want to play against Finn. You don't want to play against PA. But... Honestly, like, it's probably just low C tier. Ursa's probably S tier. I, I would say that Wind Ranger and Ursa are both almost S tier for me. You could put Ursa in S tier if you really feel like it. Like, the, the, the only interchangeable things, like, I think at, like, 1,200,000 MMR, like, rank 1, Wind Ranger's probably S tier. Ursa's probably S tier at, like, the, like normalish MMR to like high MMR and then maybe not in like super low. I don't know. I feel like it's actually hard for like average players to play a really good Ursa, but I also think it gets kited a lot easier against really good players. So I'm not exactly sure. I could, I could see an argument for both these heroes, but I think that at any MMR, so long as you know how to play the heroes, these heroes are like in, insanely unbeatable. Medusa? We forgot about Medusa, that's true. Medusa, um, you're kind of picking this hero for fun, to be honest. Uh, here's how every game of Medusa goes. If the Medusa sucks balls and trades level 1 with level 0 mana shield, you just lose the lane and you can't play Dota anymore. If the enemy team pretends she doesn't exist until she hits level 3, and by God, if they pretend she doesn't exist until level 5, she just auto-carries the game. But her laning phase is so weak in the early levels. Like, so weak. People that don't abuse it, like, she can do the meta where she sits in lane forever. But I feel like the hero is just not that good. I think a lot of the other heroes deal with her pretty well, too. It's, it's This is not supposed to be for pro games. They're for pubs, but I also try to keep in mind that, like, not everyone's 10 to 11 KMMR, and if I, if I made the list for 10 to 11 KMMR people, it'd be for, like, the 300 people in the world that have that rank or whatever, or 500, 600, whatever it is now, 1,000. This is for everybody, so I try to, like, separate, like, Immortal from, like, 2 KMMR. Like, that's where I make, like, in high rank games, some of the heroes will do better. In low rank games, like, especially Herald, Sniper, Bristol, PL are, like, unbeatable. But, you know, in Immortal games, not so much. That's just the distinction. It's, I'm not trying to distinguish it from pro play. I'm just trying to mention any pro insight I can as well. Like, if I mention, like, Chaos Knight can't win in pro games, but it's unbeatable in pubs, that's why he's an S tier. And that's there. Slark? Um, honestly, 
I feel like you pick Slark if you hate your team. Um, shout out to BSJ on that one. Um, I think we're going to put him in Hero Specialist, though. I think you have to be like a really good Slark player to win on Slark this patch, but it's not impossible. I definitely think it's much harder to play this hero from behind than any of the other heroes, and it's also much harder. Like, Slark actually suffers a lot. Slark suffers a lot from laning against university heroes because he wants to trade with auto attacks in the early game and they just kind of do that better than him a lot of the time. Wraith King, okay, okay, okay. Wraith King. Um, I don't know if it's C or D. I feel like he got nerfed so much that... I don't even think it's Herald Superstar. I think it's just you pick this hero if you want to play Wraith King. I think he got nerfed too much. I see it's throwing shade on my uh my Spectre and Deuce. I see there's some shade being thrown in the chat. Um where at the Hero Specialist Not too much to talk about there. I think the hero can work. It's just very weak in the lane a lot of the time. Medusa's really bad right now, I feel like. Pudge carry, eh. Bloodseeker's a pick if you hate your team, for sure. Are there any carries I'm forgetting besides like stuff like Meepo or Lone Druid or stuff we don't really care about that one guy in the comments will care about and we'll bait him into commenting that he like, what, Lone Druid's not on the list? How could you forget about Lone Druid? But we actually just baited him into commenting by not putting it on the list because we're so smart. DK? Oh yeah, DK got picked at the in the tournaments, huh? I, I think you picked DK here. Okay, DK is like Sven if Sven sucked. That's that's my opinion on DK right now. So if you want to pick DK carry, be my guest and lose all your games. Tiny carry dead, yeah, pretty much. We're gonna leave it. We're specifically leaving out stuff like Lycan or Londrid or Meepo or any other degenerate heroes that you, maybe you have fun playing as a carry, like Necro or Abaddon, uh, to bait all those people into commenting that they're not on the list in the YouTube. And I think that's it. I think that's the whole list. This was a really long one, but that's okay. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let my grandma at the cage. Thank you. Bye-bye.